Hi, I'm Bob Christopher and welcome to Basic Gospel Answers. Today's question is this, what Bible should I read? Now people ask this all the time and mostly from brand new Christians. They go into a Christian bookstore and there are so many choices and they wonder which one is going to be the best for me. Now, I love this question because people who ask it, they have a genuine desire to truly read the Bible and understand it so they can apply it in their day-to-day -day lives. Now, the exciting news for us today is that we have many, many choices. Years and years ago, there was just one or two choices, but today there are hundreds of different options for us to choose. And you can find a Bible that you will enjoy reading, that you will enjoy studying and diving into and learning about the God of this universe and the love that He has expressed to you through the person and work of Jesus Christ. Now, the translations, the various translations, uh, the translators use two different styles uh, to bring the Word of God into the English language. And this would be true of any language. So the original autographs, the original uh, Word of God was written in Hebrew, Greek, and Aramaic. And those autographs, we don't have those anymore, but we have copies. And those copies are called manuscripts. And scholars have brought those uh, various copies together, and they have produced a text, a Hebrew text, Aramaic and Greek, that they can translate from. Now, when they translate, they're going to decide to go through one route or another. And the first, is called formal equivalence. Now this is a fancy name and it simply means literal. So the translators are taking a more literal approach to the translation, a word for word, if you will. Now there's really no such thing as a word for word translation. That would just be absolutely impossible to do because uh, the words in Greek sometimes don't translate exactly for us in the English language. So this interlinear, it is probably the most literal of all translations. And actually when you open up its pages, you will see the Greek on one line and right underneath it is the English translation. And it's very difficult to read and to understand. Why? Because it doesn't flow very well like our normal English language does. So the ones, the Bible translations that follow uh, this particular style of translation, as I said, there's the interlinear, there's the New American Standard Bible. Uh, that's probably the most literal that's very readable. We have the English Standard Version. We have the New King James and the King James. So these are formal equivalent translations. Now, the next style is called dynamic equivalence. So you have formal equivalence and dynamic equivalence. Well, dynamic equivalence is a thought for thought. So the translators are trying to express the underlying meaning of the words. So they're looking at it from a bigger picture. So they're trying to figure out what the writers were trying to communicate and then they say how should we communicate that in the English language. So it is a thought for thought translation. Now some of the translations that follow this line are these. It's the New Living Translation. And I think this is probably the most readable Bible uh, on the market today. I love just opening up the New Living Translation and just simply reading it. Reading entire books in the New Testament. And it really gives you a big picture feel of what each author is communicating in their letters. 
the new international version. Now this is the most popular Bible on the market. I don't know how many millions, but it is way up there as far as new NIVs out on the market and in people's hands today. There's also the contemporary English version and the Holman Christian Standard Bible. All of these are dynamic equivalent Bibles. So which one do you choose? Which one is going to be best for you? Well, here's my recommendation. I think you should pick a Bible from each group. Uh, for me, I read every day on our, on our radio broadcast from the ESV, the English Standard Version. So that's more of a formal equivalent Bible, uh, but I, I love that as a study Bible. But also, I have the NIV and the New Living Translation close by. So sometimes when somebody has a question, I'll look at the NIV or the New Living Translation just to get a feel of what the author is trying to communicate and hopefully answer the question in a better way. So my advice is to pick one from each group. So for me, I would pick the ESV and then the New Living Translation. But that's just my recommendation. You go and pick one, go to a Bible bookstore and pick up several of these and read through it and see what feels best and right for you. Now there's lots of folks that would say, no, no, there's only one good English translation. And what they do is they make an idol out of their Bibles. We're never to worship the Bible. Our worship is of the Lord Jesus Christ. And each of these is going to point us to Jesus Christ. Now, here's something that we really need to understand and know in regards to any Bible translation that we pick and choose to read. We're never going to understand that by, by mere intellect alone. We can't take an academic approach and hope to understand the words written in the Bible. We have to rely on God's Spirit to teach us the meaning. Why? Because these are spiritual words and they have to be discerned spiritually. So regardless of the Bible translation, Every time you open up the Word of God, you need to go into the Word of God relying on God's Spirit to teach you the meaning. Now let me just share a couple of passages. 2 Peter 1.21 says this, For no prophecy was ever produced by the will of man, but men spoke from God as they were carried along by the Holy Spirit. So this book... Uh, God used imperfect people to produce a perfect text. And how did he do it? He moved these men over a 1500 year period by the Holy Spirit to write down God's testimony concerning his son. So when you go into the word of God, these aren't man-made stories. This didn't come out of the imaginations of men. This is God's word to you and me penned by these various men as they were moved by the Holy Spirit. So the Holy Spirit inspired it and when you and I come to Christ, God sends us the Holy Spirit and He comes to live inside of us. So the same Spirit that moved these men to write uh, down these words that we've compiled as the Bible is the same Spirit that resides in you. So He's going to guide you into all truth and bring to your mind an understanding and an interpretation of the Word of God. 1 Corinthians, Paul says this, What we have received is not the spirit of the world, but the spirit who is from God, so that we may understand what God has freely given us. So I don't know what you're thinking right now. You don't know what I'm thinking. 
But if I reveal it, then you will know. And if you reveal what you're thinking to me, then I will know. Well, in the same way, we don't know what God is thinking. Now, we try to figure it out. Uh, we try to um, ascertain his thoughts, uh, but we just can't. We need those thoughts to be revealed to us. And how are God's thoughts revealed to us? By the very Spirit of God. So God has given us His Spirit. We have received the Spirit so that we may understand what God has freely given us in Christ Jesus. Eternal life, forgiveness, righteousness, a new identity, reconciliation, redemption. These are all the things that God has given us and it takes a spirit spiritual mind to discern exactly what those are and how they apply in our day-to-day -day lives. John 16, 13 says this, but when he, the spirit of truth comes, he will guide you into all truth. There are many people that read this Bible, that study, that take a deep dive into the word of God, but they're not free. Why? Because they're bringing their own interpretation to it. They are reading it through the lens of their own understanding. They are reading it with a legalistic, fear-based mindset. And this Bible is going to be a very difficult book from that perspective. But we need to, to dive into it looking for truth and only the Spirit of God can guide us into all truth. And when we understand and see that truth, guess what happens? We experience freedom. As Jesus said, if you are really my disciples, you will know the truth and the truth will set you free. And when the Son has set you free, you are free indeed. So this Bible contains truth. It takes the Spirit of God to reveal that truth to us. So whatever Bible translation you choose to read, just dive in, but do so with a deep dependence upon the Spirit of God to teach you the meaning, to reveal to you the truth of the Word, the story of Jesus, so that you can experience freedom in your day-to-day -day lives. Hi, I'm Bob Christopher. Thanks for joining us on this edition of Basic Gospel Answers. We'll have a new video up next week, next Thursday at 10 o'clock. So be sure and subscribe, like, and ring the bell so that you'll be notified when the next edition of Basic Gospel Answers is coming your way. We'll see you next time.